know if anyone's gonna get onto this live video and watch. But I really just wanted to share my heart, my thoughts, my testimony um, about making it five years to being celibate. Um, I wasn't sure if I was gonna do this as a Facebook Live or um, just put it on YouTube, but it'll be on both since I'm gonna do it on Facebook Live. So, um, I'm just really overjoyed and excited and like honored to share, you know, that I made it five years. Like, that's a long time to make it for five whole years being celibate. And so, I kind of just wanted to share, you know, my journey, I guess. Um, just share what God has done, what he's taught me, you know, how I've been able to hold it together for five, five long years. Um, and hopefully, in hopes that, you know, this will bless somebody, that this will help somebody, it will encourage somebody and speak into people's lives um, just because, you know, in today's society, sex is at the top. Sex is extremely important. Like, you know, to explore yourself and your sexuality and um, what makes you feel good and it's good for your relationships and how you get to know somebody and, you know, you do what makes you feel good, you do what pleases you. Um, and to go against the grain of society and go against the grain of our culture it's not an easy thing. It's totally not an easy task to, you know, not be sexually active when everything that you see, everything that you hear, like you can't, you can't barely go out the house without some image or some sound or something that has to do with sex is like plastered right in your face. Like I can't watch a commercial about ice cream without it being some type of sexual something. I don't, it's ridiculous. Like, I live up the street from the Victoria's Secret or the Limited or whatever, L Brands, and they've got these scantily clad girls on the billboard. Like, so everything that you see, everything that um, you experience is like sex in your face. That sounds gross. But literally, like, it's right in your face. And so it's just like, you know, I really just wanted to share what God has done, like, what some of the things that he's taught me in hopes that this will encourage somebody to get on the path of celibacy if you're not already there. And if you are there, to encourage you to keep going because the enemy would want you to give in and will want you to quit and to fall short. So, um, so just a little bit about me. Um, I was raised in church. Um, my parents taught me at an early age, you know, don't have sex before marriage, but, um, it was never all the way explained to me, you know, they talked to me about soul ties and, um, you know, you know, if you have sex, you'll have a soul tie, but when you are in your teenage years, what does that even mean? And then, you know, you hear stuff about STDs and getting pregnant and at 16, 17, you're invincible, so no way that that's gonna happen to you at all. Like, whatever. And when, for real, for when I first started having sex, my whole mindset was, I for real, I want to know what it's all about. I like, I want to get, I want to know what the hype is about. I want to know what the fuss is about. And so I opened the door to a life of promiscuity, and I lived this way for many years um I opened the door to sex and so sex became a thing and I was very active I was very you know mannish and I did stuff that pleased me whatever I wanted I did to please me and I just got so far out there and for so long sex was a substitute for intimacy for me Whenever I would find myself in a place where, you know, I would get heartbroken, um, I would turn to having sex because I wanted somebody to be close. 
I wanted somebody to be in my space. Like, I wanted somebody to make me feel valued or to make me feel seen, to make me feel, like, loved and appreciated or whatever the case is. So I would use sex for that. I'd also use sex for recreation because, like I said, our society tells us that whatever's clever, do what you feel and enjoy it. And so I did it. Like, I, I, I did it. And... When I got to a place where, like, my life kind of hit bottom, I was in a relationship with a guy, and I'd given him everything that, like, I literally gave him everything. I gave him my body. I gave him my time. I gave him um, my mental state. Like, I gave him my full emotion. And when I had given him everything and he still cheated on me, it was just like, you know, I don't, I don't got nothing left. I don't really know what else to do except for to return to God. And so I started to come back to church and get my life, get my life together. But it wasn't, um, it took me some time. Like, because my concept of church and being a Christian was, you know, I would go to church and acknowledge God on Sunday and whatever Bible study day. And then after that, the rest of the week was mine. Like I could kind of, I love God, but I could still do me. It's funny because a couple years ago, I saw a thing that that was like single, saved, and having sex. There, it's possible to be single and saved and not having sex. I'm living proof clearly. I, I've been doing this for five years, um, but I was still having sex because I, that was my context. That's what I thought was right. That's what I knew. And so that's just kind of what I did. Um, but God really began to show me, like, no. Like, no. This is not the life that I called you to. That when you are a Christian and when you call yourself a Christian. So I'm not speaking to unbelievers. If you're a non-believer, I pray that, you know, you find Christ. And that you really let him arrest your heart. But if you're a believer, there's a prescribed way for us to live. There's already a prescription, a laid out way, the way that we're supposed to live our lives. And we are supposed to live our lives according to the dictates of the Bible. Not the dictates of society, not the dictates of our flesh, not the dictates of our feelings, not the dictates of our friends or anything like that. The way that we live our lives is supposed to be according to the word of God. So as a believer, if you are not married... You are not supposed to be having sex. Period. No regular sex. No oral sex. No solo sex. Nothing. Like. Zero. And that's so counterculture. Because our culture tells us, you know, that it's okay. That you can still love God and be a Christian and be saved. But, you know, you do it what you need to do because, you know, we have needs. No. When I gave my body to God, when I surrendered my physical body to God, my whole life changed. And it took me some time. It definitely took me some time to get here. And I, I failed. Um... In the beginning, I remember it was like New Year's Eve and I was like, I'm not doing it. I'm not having sex no more. And the guy that I was sleeping with, I was like, we can't do this. I cut him off. But then a couple months later, which is why, you know, it's today. A couple months later, I ended up sleeping with this guy. And I, I, I remember so vividly and I kind of, I thank God that he allowed this to be my experience. I remember vividly, like I felt like I let God down. Like, I felt so much like I had disappointed him. And that feeling, to know that I broke God's heart, and I'm not, I'm trying not to cry because I got on I don't want to cry. But to know that I broke God's heart because I, I chose to indulge in my flesh, like, that hurt my heart. And, like, that feeling is what I've been able to carry with me. Like, to know that 
because I don't belong to me. My body doesn't belong to me. Like, when I gave it to somebody else, I broke God's heart. The Bible tells us, you know, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And I wasn't keep, keeping God's commandments. So I wasn't showing him that I loved him. And that broke me. And that there, that experience is what propelled me into a life of celibacy. That is what helped me to be passionate about this. To be passionate about fully living my life completely for God with my body. Like, the I say my body, but like I said, my body doesn't belong to me. And so in recognizing that, that's the first step to being able to live a life of celibacy. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body doesn't belong to you. Your body belongs to Christ. Once you give your life to Christ, you give your whole self to him. Like, all of you belong to him. Not just, you know, your Sunday when you go to church and you lift your hands in worship and you might cry some ugly tears and sing some songs about, you know, God, I love you. I adore you. My life is not my own, blah, 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 blah. But you can't say that and then go outside of church and do whatever you want to. That doesn't work. It don't work like that. Point blank, period. So really having that understanding was, the, like I said, the first step for me to be able to live this life of celibacy. But for real, for real, being for real transparent, there are times, and especially more, more in the beginning than now, but even still now, there are times when I just want to be like, you know, forget it. Like, I don't want to do this no more. I don't want to live this life of celibacy. Like, I just, I don't got this. Like, I don't got this to do. Um, and I just, you know, want to be down or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what these kids are saying. But there are times when I just, you know, want to scratch that itch. There you go. But there is a scripture, and I wish I I had it memorized, but I'll write it in whatever. There's a scripture that says that God gives us the desire and the power to do what pleases him. So sometimes, when you even when you don't want to do right, you can ask him to help you want to do right. I think that, you know, for as Christians, we don't talk about that a lot. How, you know, sometimes you just don't want to do right. Just be real. Sometimes, like, you just don't want to do right. Sometimes you just want to do what makes you feel good and you want to do what's good for you. That's real. And people don't talk like that. Sometimes you just, you know, want to scratch that itch and it just be like, God knows my heart. God knows that I have needs. God knows that, you know, I got to. But there is a way to have the desire to do right, even when you don't want to do right. The first few months, and like I say, even still now, like, I have to pray, like, God, give me the desire to do your will. Because for real, for real, I don't want to do your will. And every time I pray that prayer, every single time I pray that prayer, he always comes through. He always comes through. There's never been a time that he's failed me whenever I pray that prayer. Like, not once. I'm not, I'm, I've not been able to be celibate for five years in my own strength. Because like I said, for real, for real, there have been times when I just wanted to be like, I'm done. Like, I don't want to be celibate. But because I've relied on his strength and in his grace, like in my points of weakness, in my times of weakness, like he's always made a way for me. The Bible teaches us that, you know, there is not any temptation that's, that he doesn't provide a way of escape for. Not one. So like even even when you want to, you know, give in, when you're tempted, it's oh, it, there's nothing wrong with you if you're tempted. There's nothing wrong with you if you, you know, get a little hot and bothered. We are human. Our body reacts the way that it's going to react because that's the way God designed it. And especially if you've opened up that door and you've had sex before. 
you know what you you know what you're not getting. So your body is going to react. Your body is going to respond. That doesn't make you any less saved. That doesn't mean that you're any less close to God. But it's what you do with it that makes the difference. If you really love God, you'll keep his commandments. If you really love God, you'll turn to him instead of turning to your flesh. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not coming from a place that, you know, I'm so high and mighty that I've made it five years and I've got, like, all this on my own. No. Like, the only way, and I'll tell this in, until the day that, you know, I'm a, allowed to indulge. <laughs> the only way that I've made it is because the grace of God. So... Like I said, the first thing is knowing that my body doesn't belong to me. The second thing is allowing and inviting God in whenever I feel weak. You know, in the Bible, it tells us that his grace is sufficient for our weakness. His grace is really the only way that I that we're able to do anything. Grace isn't just, you know, unmerited favor. Grace is God's strength and God's ability, God's power, like, so when you don't got it, he got it. He always has got it. Always. So the third thing, the very, very, very practical way that I've been able to stay celibate is minding what I watch and what I listen to. And you know, this is very sticky for a lot of Christians because you be, they'd be like, no, it don't take all that. It doesn't require all that. For real, for real, it does. Because anytime I listen to something that talks about sex, anytime I watch something that has some type of sex scene, my mind is gone. And I'm just being for real. I think, you know, too much in the church, we just, we fake and we don't talk about this kind of stuff. But you can't watch just anything or listen to just anything and think that it's not going to affect you. Seriously, it's going to affect you. Like what you say, like what you listen to, what you look at, what you like am, allow in makes a difference. It makes an impact. And honestly, my imagination is too wild to introduce anything else into it. Like I have to keep my mind real in I have to keep my thoughts real in because if I don't if I start to dwell on it then it's going to lead me into a place of sin the bible talks about how sin starts in a thought and then as you think on it and you dwell on it then it becomes full grown and it leads you to death so what you listen to what you watch it, it plays a big part like I, I can't watch sex scenes. I can't do it. I'm I'm not strong enough. And I think that once you know what your triggers are and you're real about them and you try you stop trying to be so high and mighty and so saved and think that you know, you know, it's 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 okay. I love the Lord. I'm okay. I can handle it. No. Like I don't listen to Usher. I can't. Like confessions when you get to like them poor songs at the end, I can't listen to that no more. I can't. I can't play with it. You talk about, you know, Trey songs. Trey songs is gone. I can't listen to Trey songs. I can't listen to that kind of stuff. I can't watch sex scenes on movies or Grey's Anatomy. I refuse to watch Fifty Shades of Grey. Because for real, for real, that'll have me out here looking for the next somebody or something to like be in my bed when I'm not married. And I don't need it. So, like, what do you, you got to watch what you watch. You have to watch what you listen to. You have to watch what you talk about. You have to watch what jokes you laugh at. Like, you know, people at work will laugh at stuff that has to do with sex and stuff. I can't, I got to walk away. Because in my own strength, I'm not strong enough. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay to admit that I don't got it together, that I can't do it, that I can't listen to it, that I can't watch it. If that's what's going to keep me honoring God with my body, if that's what it takes, then that's just what it takes. And that's what I'll do. Like, I think too many Christians are so comfortable with doing stuff like the world and then wonder why we struggle with the things that we struggle with. Because 
because you are dabbling in stuff of the world. Like, if you haven't come out from among them and decided to be separate, like the Bible tells us, and sanctified yourself unto the Lord, of course you're still struggling with X, Y, and Z. I'm just saying. I am happy that I've made it five years. I have never known peace like I know. Um, I've never known joy. I don't have to worry about, you know, when you go to the doctor and they say, um, are you pregnant? No. Are you sure? There's no chance. Absolutely not. I don't have to worry about STDs. I don't have to worry about nobody cheating on me. I don't have to worry about soul ties, which are very real, like having to take on the, sh the traits of somebody else's personality. Like, I don't, I don't deal with any of that because I chose to honor God with my body. I've chosen to give him full control of my life. I've chosen to really give him all of me. Like, I found the intimacy that I was looking for through worship and being with him. Like, there's nothing that compares to it. And for real, for real, I've had a lot of sex. And to say that nothing compares to it, that's saying a big thing. Like, one of my favorite things to say, that's really one of my favorite things to say in worship, is God, nothing compares to you. Because I've tried it. I've tried a lot of stuff. I've dabbled in a lot of, uh, in a lot of stuff. I've got experiences for days. And to know that in all of that, nothing compares to God. Like, it's it's the greatest thing. It's the best thing in the world. So, uh, just, I want to encourage you, like I said, live a life of purity. Because it's worth it. The cost is high. You're weird. You're strange. People won't understand you. You have to deny yourself. Yes, it costs a lot, but it's worth a lot. It's worth so much more than what you pay for it. Like, and I don't, I don't, I don't know where else you're going to pay for something and it have a higher value. That doesn't happen often, except for in the kingdom of God. I mean, I guess people do it if you go thrifting and blah, blah, blah. But still, like, to know that it's worth it. Like, peace like you've never known. Love like you've never known. Joy like you've never known. Like, peace of mind. You can't put a price on that. You cannot put a price on peace of mind. And so, you know, as I, I, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful to God because there's no way that I've done this in and of my own strength. There's absolutely no way. Until you really recognize that, you know, first of all, your body doesn't belong to you. Your body belongs to the Lord. My life is not my own. To you, I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you first. Second, invite God in. When you feel weak, because there's going to be times over and over and over, it doesn't just stop. It doesn't just go away. You will feel weak. You will want to give in. You will want to. But when you invite God into those moments, you will see that he honors his promise to you. That he'll be there. That he'll sustain you. That he'll keep you. That, you know, you'll make it with his help. That you can get through that. And then thirdly, watch what you watch. Watch what you listen to. I've gotten to the point where those three to five, seven minutes, it's not worth it. It's not worth my relationship with God. It's not worth my salvation. I'm being generous by saying seven minutes because whatever. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Like, because that's all that you get. That's all you're going to get out of it. A few minutes, 
and then you got to deal with the condemnation and the guilt that comes from you know letting God down and then you gotta burrow your way out of a hole that you put yourself in that's not worth it it's so not worth it so I hope this is encouraging I don't know sometimes I just be feeling like I'm talking and I don't know if it makes sense but I hope that it was encouraging if you want to Please reach out to me. Like, I'm an open book. I will share whatever. I'll give you, um, the Bible tells us that, you know, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and their word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives even unto the death. So, I don't love my life that much that I would be embarrassed by anything that I did. Because it's under the blood. God saved me from it. And it's just a part of my story. So, if you want encouragement, if you want to talk to me some more, please feel free to message me, to reach out to me, to, I don't know, shoot me an email, to leave a comment, whatever the case is. I just pray that this is encouraging somebody to keep going or encouraging you, if you haven't, to get on the path to celibacy because it's worth it. It's so worth it. It's so worth it. Well, those are just my few thoughts tonight. Thank you to everybody who watched. Um, yeah. Have a good night.